Ich bin's wieder, Markus Wimmer von Ground and Pound TV und ich sitze hier mit Marshall Selesnik, den Präsident der UFC in UK und von ganz Europa. Und ähm, wir werden uns erstmal uns unterhalten darüber, von wegen, was in Europa jetzt passiert und vor allen Dingen über den deutschen Event auch. Hi Marshall, how are you doing? Are you pumped for the first uh, UFC FN Expo here in UK? I am, yeah. Today was the first day, as you know. It was a great turnout. I was really, really impressed with people coming out. I mean, today is a work day, right? It's Friday. And there were, you know, 10,000 people maybe in the hall. Um, but the exhibitors, yeah, it's been very impressive. And it has been really energizing for the UFC to be here and see that. It's been great. Yes, it's uh, also the first time for us uh, to, to join the um, Fan Expo. And it was awesome. So it was really exciting, a vibrant, vibrant ground, uh, crowd. And it was awesome. Yes. And um, um, What do you expect from, from for tomorrow for the for the event? You see 120. There are some very good good guys on the card. Yes. Akiyama superstar in Japan against Bisping superstar in 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 UK. Okay. Yeah, these are uh, the two you mentioned are clearly you know big stars in the sport, but even bigger stars in their home country. Um, you know, I think what we can expect tomorrow. First of all, it's the biggest selling event we've ever had in Europe. Um, there should be 17,000 plus people in the arena. Every seat full. Um, we have, I think there are eight fighters, actually I think there are 11 fighters from within Europe on this card. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's going to be a great moment for the UFC and great for mixed martial arts, you know, to be in London. Um, there's a lot of energy around the event. We're expecting a lot of celebrities, you know, Jude Law, we're expecting um, Robert Downey Jr. is uh, rumored to be coming. Um, we've got a number of the uh, football players from the uh, English Premier League coming. So it's becoming quite, a, quite an event here in London. Yes, yeah, and quite a success. It's, it's, it's um, um, uh, UK. The, the UFC is, is already a, a big thing. It's, it's hit uh, all, um, already the mainstream. And um, in, in, in the next month, we go to, to, to Germany. Yes. And um, there we have some, some troubles with bad press and with some politicians who've gone crazy and uh, banned um, uh, the UFC from the TV. What's your take on this? Well, this is certainly not the way we had hoped it would go in Germany. You know, I think that we always expect a little bit of misunderstanding. Um, the thing that's been probably the most frustrating about the process is the, the unwillingness for some of the politicians and the media to just open their mind to what this is. Um, it reminds me, even though I wasn't alive at the time, it reminds me of when Elvis Presley was on television in America and he shook his legs on TV and everyone thought, my God, it's taboo, you can't do this, it's terrible for young people. Um, of course, now we realize how, um, how uh, nonsensical um, that was. And I think that will prove to be the case with the politicians' resistance in Germany. Uh, but we're optimistic. We're, the tickets are selling great for Oberhausen. We're making really good progress recently with meetings from the members of parliament that we've met with. Uh, there's a better openness now going on. There are certainly still some um, politicians who are dug into their position, not showing any willingness to be open-minded to the issue, um, which, you, you know, you wouldn't expect that from most people. You certainly wouldn't want it from any of your politicians. You'd want them to be open-minded and willing to listen to both sides and have a justified opinion. But so many of the opinions there, you know, seem to be based on erroneous facts and unwillingness to listen. Um, so that's been the biggest challenge and frustration, but we're not going away. You know, we're going to be in Germany. We're holding our event. We'll hold more events. And sooner or later, you'll be able to watch somebody's knee shaking on TV. In this case, it'll be the UFC, you know, fighting on TV. And, um, and the, you say that you will willing to stay in Germany. You're not leaving anywhere. You, this is not the, the second event. There will, will be a third, a fourth, and so on. You, the UFC is going nowhere. The UFC is going everywhere, including Germany. <laughs> and yes, I know what you mean. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, we are going nowhere. We are staying in Stay Germany. In Germany. Uh, we've got big plans for Germany. We've got big plans for Europe. We've got big plans for the rest of the world. And. We've dealt with this before. We've dealt with politicians that, you know, didn't Back want to the hear 90s. the facts. Back in the 90s, exactly. And so this is, we've been there, done that, and we're going to get through this. Uh, we've been having a pretty easy time about it in most places. And mm -hmm. Germany just is one of those places that we'll figure out. Yes, and um, you said you have big plans for Germany. Is there maybe uh, a coming up season for the Ultimate Fighter Germany? Or is there maybe, uh, we have some really good upcoming guys. Uh, there on the fight card, there are three guys um, uh, from Germany and one guy who, who lives in Germany and trains in Brazil. Um, yeah. uh, we're talking about uh, Peter Sobata, Dennis Siva, Pascal Kron 
Kraus and uh, Eduardo, Carlos Eduardo Rocha, yes. who trains in Brazil but lives in, in Germany. And uh, there are so many upcoming guys right now, like, like uh, Jonas Bildstein mm -hmm. or Christian Eckerlin. And um, the scene in Germany gets uh, also um, every time more professional. There are very good events now, um, national events like GMC, mm -hmm. the German MMA Championship, or like Respect or Backstreet Fights. Mm -hmm. And is there any chance that one of these fighters gets on one uh, season of the Ultimate Fighter? Look, we just announced new season uh, tryouts for the Ultimate Fighter. It'll be uh, middleweights and welterweights. And so obviously they're all encouraged to, to um, look into it. You know, one of the things we look at in every territory is doing the Ultimate Fighter, a localized version of it. You know, we've talked about, you know, um, country versus country, you know, or uh, the World Cup of uh, the Ultimate Fighter, you know, there awesome. could be, it'd be awesome. awesome. So, you know, these are things we're constantly thinking about. We have so much on our plate, so much we're doing, but there will be a day where, you know, there will be a German version of the Ultimate Fighter and it will be a big, big success and it will continue to drive this sport higher and higher. And 10 years from now, we're going to look back and all those politicians that tried to stop it and all the media that didn't understand it are going to say, did we really believe that? Because you know, yeah. it's going to be so popular, there's no doubt. Yeah, I think uh, the Germany needs uh, guys to, uh, to, to cheer for. And the Ultimate Fighter always uh, produce uh, great characters. And uh, you can, even if he's not winning the, the, the contest, um, but he stays long enough in the house. This is also so you can identify with him. You see how they train in the house. You see how serious uh, the guys uh, um, take in the spot. And, um, and if you have a guy to cheer for, I think it's maybe a, a good thing to make a breakthrough in Germany. Germany. Yeah, definitely. The, the Ultimate Fighter was the, the tool, if you will, that really allowed us to elevate the sport in the U.S. and gave us mm. the legs, really, to start you know, taking our um, sport across the world. So the localized version in Germany will be no different. In fact, it mm. probably is one of the most important elements to making people understand that these are real people who are very sophisticated fighters, who are great athletes, who are emotional, that this is meaningful for them. Mm. This isn't a hobby where they've walked out of a pub and decided to do this. Mm. And that's what the Ultimate Fighter does. It shows how real these guys are, um, how genuine the sport is, and why it's the most exciting sport well, in the world. Yes, I can only agree with you. <laughs> and um, I think the only problem is that we um I have to educate the people in Germany because the people on the streets don't know about the spot. They only read the bad press. They only hear what the what, what politicians are talking about, and they are trying. Maybe the politicians try to get a, a profile or something like that, and um, and say uh, some bad things for the wrong reasons. And uh, even if they know better, yes. and um, I think what can we do to to educate the people? I think uh, can you. Uh, say something in the camera what you uh, what uh, the UFC is all about what MMA is all about yeah sure listen you know the there's a lot of misunderstanding about the sport you know the the reality is is that the sport is comprised of many of the arts that are used in the Olympics so it's Taekwondo in essence it's the two forms of wrestling freestyle and Greco Roman it's judo which is an Olympic sport boxing which is an Olympic sport so mixed martial art is really a bringing together of those sports and when you have that baseline understanding and you think well if they're okay individually why aren't they okay together um, and so you start with that premise and then you start to break down that there are 32 fouls in the unified rules of mixed martial arts there are 16 fouls in boxing boxing yes. right so there are more fouls there are, there's more um, limitations on what fighters can do inside the octagon than people than people understand mm -hmm. there are weight classes people think there are no more weight classes there are um, ways for people to um, win fights by judges decision by a referee stoppage by a submission these there are rules there are gloves I mean still people think there are no gloves, gloves people yes. think they fight to the death, death there's insane. never been a death <laughs> yes yeah. it's insane so you know these are the baseline facts that we have to continually drill into politician into the media and to anyone willing to listen and if you look at the facts and you look at the medical studies that show that this sport is actually safer than other any other combat sport safer than boxing um, you can't argue with those facts. It's even, it's even mo much more safer than cycling. Yeah, yeah two of the fronts, there, there are more people dying than in the UFC or yeah. in any MMA sport. Yeah, yeah, that's, no. the, you know, that's the, the irony of the whole no. thing, you know, is that there is this perception that this is somehow more dangerous than other sports, when the reality is it's, um, it's 
it's managed, it's regulated, it's because of the uh, screening the fighters go through mm. and because of uh, the regulation associated yeah. with it, it turns out to be a much safer participating sport than anyone would ever yeah. imagine. It's supervised by the Athletic Commission, yes? Yes, yes. And yes. Marshall, I think um, it's, it's not a, a question of opinion, but if you only listen to the facts, only listen to the, to the numbers, I think it's obvious that uh, mixed martial arts is one of the safest, uh, best supervised sports uh, there ever uh, ever exists. Yeah, look, what people don't understand is that the sport is really developing through a lot of the regulatory bodies in the United States and in other parts of the world where we do events. And when I say regulatory bodies, I don't mean a not-for-profit boxing group, a not-for-profit um, cycling group. I'm talking about a government regulated group that where people are appointed by government elected officials who have the responsibility to ensure fighter safety. These are the rules which have been developed for mixed martial arts, the unified rules, the rules that the UFC fights and holds its events under. So that is a very important distinction because when you think about what boxing commissions and boxing um, authorities do in most countries, they are guys who are appointed by the promoters or some, there's, there are all sorts of issues as to whether um, these are in fact um, objective groups. Now I'm not making any comment as to whether in fact they are, mm -hmm. but you know when you're dealing with a, a state boxing authority in the U.S. or a state regulatory authority, you're dealing with independent officials. Yes, there's no connections. No connection, and that's mm -hmm. what people have to realize, that this mm -hmm. isn't a, um, a group, a commission that's put together by some private funding. You know, this mm -hmm. is funded with tax dollars, and that those are the rules under which the MMA and which the UFC abides by, and we put a lot of money to get that message out to ensure that every event being held around the world is held to those same rules because it needs to be safe, it needs to be regulated. Um, and we want the regulation. Mm -hmm. We want you know, people to look, come and see how we manage our events. We are an open book. Come and look at it, and yes. we will open and show you. Yes, I think it's, it's, it's the best bad advice uh, that we can give um, to anyone who, who uh, see this. Uh, just come to a UFC event. Just see how it's managed. Just see how, how you run the event. Yes. And I think uh, most of the prejudices that people have, uh, yes. we, we, they will lose it. Yeah. Yes. yeah, there's no doubt. You come to an event. First of all, it's a great event in and of itself, even if you're yeah. not trying to find problems with it. You know, because you'll go there. You might try to find problems, but you'll walk away being, being the biggest fan. It happens everywhere. I yes. mean, every time you meet someone, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to like it, mm. just come. Come. And the next thing you know, I'm emails. Can you send me some DVDs? <laughs> how can I find more? Where can I get shirts? That's how yes, it happens. Yes. That's how, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah, this, is, this is the thing that happened to us also. Yes. Uh, the first uh, UFC event in, in Germany, in Cologne, um, it, it was awesome. It was unbelievable. I always see uh, you see on TV, but it's, it's really different to be there. The feel, yes. feel the, the feel it. Yes, and it's funny. Most sports, and I'm a big sports fan, mm. are almost better sometimes to watch in your living room on television. The UFC is the one sport that is much better live. It's not even close no. in terms of how much better it is live versus <laughs> TV. And TV is great, but live is like 10 times better. And the, the, thing we, uh, the thing we can say, come to Germany, to, to Oberhausen, UFC 122, it, would, it will be awesome. We will oh. awesome night. Yes. Yes. And yes. Meaningful fights, fights that will ultimately take individual fighters onto their quest for a championship. In fact, the main event is a qualifier. The winner of that fight is fighting for the championship in his next fight. So these are meaningful fights in the sport, meaningful fights in the UFC, meaningful fights for Europe, and meaningful fights for Germany. Germany, yes. yes. I think um, everybody should attend uh, this event because it help, helps also the, the national scene in, 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 in Germany. Yes. And if you ever want to uh, be professional, we have to uh, everybody uh, fill up the, the Oberhausen Arena. Yeah, we need to activate people. They need to come and see it. And, yes. um, you know, we are in you know, the early stages of the development there. Mm -hmm. And the more people that see it, the more people they tell, the bigger it becomes, the sooner we're back on TV, yes. the sooner the politicians realize there's much ado about nothing, and <laughs> let us do our event, yes. you know, and let us get on TV, and let us uh, have a successful sport there in Germany. There are people that want to participate in it, there are people that want to see it, and the politicians are designed to help the people get what they want. <laughs> yes, 100% agree. <laughs> seems pretty simple to me, that's a democracy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah, I, it. I thank you. All right. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. It, would be, it was awesome and really an honor. All right. To appreciate speak it. You. Thank you for the support. All right. All right. You're welcome. All right. Great.